This is the last service in the month of May. But I thank God today for your taking out time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And today our scripture reading will come from the book of Acts, chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 14. And it reads, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judah, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. For these men are not drunk, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And verse 17 and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and young son and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Thank God for the reading of his word today. Father, I thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus for your word. Because we know, Lord God, that your word will not return unto you for it today. We thank you, Lord God, for the revival that's getting ready to take place, oh God. And in some states like California, it has already started, oh God. God, it may not be a revival like the ones that they used to when the God, God generals had revivals, oh God. But this, Lord God, will be young people, oh God, going out and minister, laying hands on people, helping people to give their life to Christ today, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that there are billions of youth, oh God, thousands of youth today, oh God, God that's going to receive you as their Lord and Savior today. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your word is true, oh God. Many, Lord God, will prophesy, oh God. Many will speak into the lives and be witnesses, oh God. God winning souls for Christ and giving God the glory today, oh God. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor today, Pastor Rolf Smith. As he bring forth the word today, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that he's going to minister, Lord, in the step out anointed, oh God. God, his anointing will not be a treadmill anointed, oh God, that stands still going nowhere, oh God. But Lord, he will have a stand out anointing today, oh God. God causing fresh revelation to come into the hearts of your people today. Father, we thank you right now. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praises in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank God today for you. And I praise God for you today. Give God the glory. Give God, give God the glory. Give God, give God. Give you the victory. 
Glory to God. Without any further ado, we're going to call up the man of God, Pastor Rawls Smith. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give God the glory. And he will give you the victory. Praise God. We thank him today. We get excited about Jesus Christ this morning, thanking God for all he's done and all he's going to do in our life, our hearts, our mind, and our soul today, praise God. We thank you right now for what he's preparing us for, praise God. He's getting us ready for something, I believe, something really great. Glory God, in order to do that, he has to get our heart, our mind, our soul right and focus and tune in on him. Locked into him, praise God, to what he wanted, what he's desired, praise God. Hallelujah. So be able to for God ever move in a supernatural way. He always prepared the hearts of the people, praise God, to receive what he's got to do and what he's about to do, praise God. So that I believe that we right now we're in the right place at the right time, praise God, to see and be experiencing some mighty, mighty, mighty move of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And he's going to need some mighty people. He's going to need some people that, that trust in him. With all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, praise God. Hallelujah. And I believe this is one of the reasons why I'm thinking that he got me in this, dealing with this unbelief, praise God, for the last few weeks. And uh, we're going to deal with unbelief today, praise God. And I, glory to God, I say, Lord, why, why, why we keep going in this direction? Glory to God, unbelief. I know they probably got it by now. And he, and he gave me a little thought. Forty years. <laughs> Forty <laughs> years. One message was teaching them how to trust God. For 40 years, he was trying to get them to get one message, how to trust him. 40 years. 40 years. And I've been dealing with for five weeks, so all I had to do was shut up. Glory to God, just keep on obeying God. Hallelujah. 40 years. They didn't get it in 40 years, praise God. 40 years, they missed out on God because all God wanted from them was to trust him. Just trust him with all that heart and all that soul. All he wants from us is to learn how to trust him. And I know most of us think that we got it down, praise God, hallelujah. But we're going to find out, praise God. I don't think we got it the way we think we got it, the way God wants us to have it, praise God, hallelujah. So we're going to look at that, that uh, Hebrews chapter 3, starting at verse 12, glory to God. Just remember 40 years. Why are you teaching this again? Remember 40 years. They didn't get it in 40 years. So don't think you got it in three Sundays or four Sundays. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hebrews chapter 3. Started reading at verse 12. Glory to God. He's writing to the believers. Glory to God. People that have turned away from Judaism and they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They want to walk with Christ. They want to give their life to Christ. Praise God. But all of a sudden now they're being persecuted for turning against religion. To Christ. And the book of the writer of Hebrew was letting them know, praise God, the ones that have come forward, praise God, that have come out of the religious system, that have come out of Judaism, and letting them know that Christ is better, praise God. Christ is better than yes, angels, yes. Christ is better than Moses, Christ uh -huh. is better than sacrifice, Christ is better than Aaron, Christ is better than the prophet. Christ is better, praise God. Yes. And this is what he wanted their focus, praise God. But at the same time, they were being persecuted. From walking away from the religious system, praise God, to Christ. Now, the writer of Hebrews is encouraging them, glory to God, hold on to Christ. Don't let go of Christ, praise God. Amen. Don't turn him loose, praise God. Hold on to Christ, no matter how it will come against your eyes, seen, praise God. Hold fast unto your faith, praise God. Don't let nothing shake your faith in God. So, here we see that we, this, this is a, not only is it a book of encouragement, but it's also a warning, praise King. Glory to God. Now you want to let them know, praise God, that their main enemy, what their main enemy is, what is the one thing that can hinder their faith in Christ? What is the one thing that can hinder their walk, praise God, for God, praise God? What is the one thing that can turn the light of faith out? Just cause your faith to dissipate, praise God. This is the one thing now that he's focusing on. So that third chapter, glory to God, and then third chapter, the 12 verse, praise God. Look what he said, that 12 verse. He said, take ye, another word would be watch out. Brethren, least there be in any of you an evil heart 
and I believe right here he's letting us know that our main enemies as born again believers is not the devil. The main enemy is unbelief. And this is a statement that we can't take lightly because we're going to find out that our number one battle glory guys, as believers is dealing with unbelief. It's, dealing, it's the one thing that we must be aware of and learn in order to be able to t take, to conquer. We have to conquer unbelief, praise God, to obtain all what God has for us. And I believe that in my soul that we want all what God has for us. And the only thing that can block that is unbelief. So he said in that 12th verse, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart and unbelief. So he's letting us know that every day we got to do some self-examination to make sure this thing is not in us, praise God. Hallelujah. Make sure that evil heart and unbelief is departed from the living God. So the purpose of this thing, of this unbelief, is to cause us to depart from God, to leave away from God, to drift away from God, praise God. He let us know what our main enemy is, but our main focus is unbelief, and he let us know the main objective. It's to lead us away from God, not to God, away from God. Hallelujah. So in the 13th verse, it said, But exalt one another daily. Why exalt one another daily? Because each and every one of us have the same battle, the same enemy, which is unbelief. But exalt one another daily, what is called today. Least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, what do you want us to do? Destroy our confidence in Christ, praise God. Say they were using persecution at that time to attack their confidence in Christ, praise God. To pull them away from Christ so they can go back into what they came out of. For we are made partakers of Christ. That word partakers have to do partners. We're in partnership now with Christ. So the enemy want to come up and break up the partnership. <laughs> and you know the only thing that can severe or break the partnership is unbelief. Stay with me. How serious is unbelief? Confidence step on the end. 15 word. Why it is said today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your heart as in provocation. For some one day had heard, did provoke. The provoke means to rebel. How be it? Now all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom he was, he was grieved 40 years. 40 years he was grieved. Was it not with them that had sinned, who carcass fell in the wilderness? And to whom he swore, he that they should not enter into his rest. For them that believe not. So we see, 19 verse, so we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief kept them out the fullness of God. The promised land represents the fullness of God. It has everything that God has to offer, praise God. It's fullness, praise God. Sure, they had manna and water in the wilderness, but that didn't represent God fullness, praise God. The manna and the water was just to get them to the fullness. Wow. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get satisfied with the stuff that just designed to carry them to a certain point. Ooh. Glory to God. But they missed out on the fullness of God because of unbelief. In that first chapter, that first verse, so here's the warning. He said, let us fear. Let us fear. Least a promise being left of us or entered into this rest that we would short seem to you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preach as well as to them. The word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter in his rest, and so he said, I have sworn in my wrath. If they should enter in my rest, although the work was finished from the foundation of the world, verse 4, for he spake 
So on a certain place on the seventh day of this while, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his work. And in that fifth verse, and in in this place again, if they should enter into my rest, sixth verse, seeing therefore it remaining that some must enter therein. And the day to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Unbelief. What is this unbelief? So let's look at this thing this morning. What is unbelief? Why is it so serious? Glory to God. So I jotted down a few things about unbelief, praise God, just to put this thing on your mind. Let's see how serious it is, praise God. What is unbelief? All unbelief is a belief of a lie. In all unbelief, there are two things. A good opinion of oneself, which is a lie. And a, and a bad opinion of God, which is another lie. Unbelief is always proud and always conceited. Mm. Unbelief in itself is the fruit of an evil heart. Unbelief was the first sin and pride was the first thing born out of unbelief. Pride came out of unbelief. Disobedient and unbelief are two sides of the same coin. Mm. Unbelief is at the bottom of all our stagnant that causes us to become stagnated, not moving in the things of God. Mm. It is the bottom of um, steadiness, of praise God, of, of God promises, of not holding on to God promise. Unbelief will make you take your hand off of God promise. Unbelief is the, is the sin that's most insulting to God. It insults God. Unbelief, unbelief insults God. The real heart of unbelief is seeking, the real heart of an unbeliever is seeking their own ways and leaving God out. Hmm. Unbelief is the greatest obstruction to Christ as favor, praise God. It can hinder us from walking in the favor of God. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Unbelief is the mother of sin, and misbelief nurses unbelief. Mm -mm. Unbelief is not a matter only of the head, but of the heart. Unbeliever's trouble is that his heart is not right with God. Unbelief is not failing in intellectual apprehension. It's disobedient in the presence of clear command of God. Disobedient in the clear command of God. Know what God's talking about. Know what God said, but still go in a different direction from what God still disobey what God said. Unbelief is the root of apostasy. Apostasy means to walk away from God, to step away from God, to leave away from God. We can never be too much on guard against unbelief. We can never be on too much on guard from unbelief. Unbelief will destroy the best of us, but faith will, to, will save the worst of us. Unbelief will destroy the best of us, but faith in God will save the worst of us. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Faith unlocks the divine storehouse. Glory to God. There's something that God got stored up for you, praise God. Faith unlock it, praise God. But unbelief can keep the doors barred up. It keeps bars on the door, praise God. Hallelujah. Unbelief is the foul melody of all sin, the root of, and the receptacle of sin. Unbelief is the chief of all wickedness. Mm. Unbelief is the mother sin, the father sin, and the parent sin. Wow. Everything that we call sin comes out of unbelief. Come on, mm. Unbelief caused Adam and Eve to sin against God in the Garden of Eden. They failed to obey the word of God. Watch this. Mm. Unbelief will destroy the best of us. Mm. Faith will save the rest of us. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. How serious is unbelief? Let's take a look at this thing this morning. Turn to Exodus 17th chapter, verses 1, I think. Exodus 17, verse 1. How serious is unbelief? Exodus 
the 17th chapter, verses 1. How serious is unbelief? Glory to God. Hallelujah. In that 17th chapter of Exodus, at verse 1, God speaking to his children. Look what he said. Exodus 17, verses 1 and 2. And all the congregation of the children of Israel joined from the wilderness of sin after they joined according to the commandments of the Lord and pitch and Rephidim there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people chide with Moses, meaning contented with Moses, and say, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why contend with me? Wherefore do you tell the Lord thy God? Watch this. The seriousness of unbelief. Israel arrived in the wilderness in a place called sin. There, there was no drinking water in sight. And the people anger contended against Moses. Give us water that we may drink. They treated God anointed if there was a personal miracle, then they was personal miracle workers. Mm. Yet not one of those people turned to the Lord in prayer. Nobody said, look, God has worked many water miracles for us. He parted the Red Sea to deliver us from Pharaoh. He sweetened a bit of water on Mary. Surely provided a drink of water for us to hear, praise God. None of us turned to God, praise God. They turned to their anger, they turned to their claim, praise God. They began to speak to the man of God in a very down way, praise God, in a very contentious way, glory to God, because they were upset, praise God, because they didn't have any water, praise God. So, so God instructed Moses, praise God, to stand before a rock and strike it. And when he did, rivers of water flowed out, more than enough to meet the people of thirst. But the Lord put a name on this episode of unbelief. He placed a name on this particular place. God gave this place a name. Hallelujah. Are you in the house? He called the place Misa, which means provocation or rebellion. Glory to God. He calls it Misha, praise God, because they have done something now to God, praise God. Glory to God. Rebellion, which is another word for aspiration, aspirated, fed up, irritated. And it was God had gotten irritated. He had gotten fed up with the people. Glory. So God was telling, you are told, you have totally aspirated me with your unbelief. God would ask her, he was fed up. Unbelief will cause God to get fed up. Are you in the house? Come on, Please understand, the Lord wouldn't just slightly grieve here. He was exaggerated to the point of anger. Come on, man. Yet he wasn't provoked, merited by people complaining. It was much worse than this. There was something deeper, praise God, that was going on here, praise God, that God was about to expose to the, to the Israelite, praise God, that God saw something that they were doing, praise God, but God about to expose it. Come on now. Yet he wasn't provoking by the people complaint. It was worse worse than that. They had accused him of abandoning them in their trials. Have we ever got to that point where we accuse God of abandoning him, praise God? They accused God. Of abandoning them in the trial. Things that got dark and they couldn't understand what's going on. Have, have God abandoned us? They had said to Moses, Wherefore is this that has brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Is the Lord among us or not? They began to question him. The same God that parted the Red Sea, praise God. The same God that gave a metal in the wilderness. Now they're questioning God. Praise. What is our God? Glory? Look, 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 look. Sometimes God will, God will just back up for a second. Come on now. Let's just to see how much we really trust him, praise God. Glory to God. We've been shouting, gave God all the glory in church in Monday come. A little trial and a test come, and all of a sudden we forgot to shout. Glory to God. Sometimes God will just move his hand back a little bit. Just 
just to find out what we really are. Do we really trust him like we say we trust him? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now watch this. Is God with us? Where is he now? We don't see any signs of his presence or power. Is the Lord dead or alive? How can we believe in a God who allows so many awful things? Now watch this now. It's getting deeper now because now they're putting, they didn't took their mouth off of Moses. Now they put their mouth on God. <laughs> Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, now we would think, oh man, the poor Israel, all they wanted was water and there was crying children. Anybody would be poisoned if they went without water. Blow that. Who wouldn't complain? But the issue here wasn't a lack of water. No wonder that God was holding back the blessing from his people. He just given Israel all the water they needed from the rock. My, my, my. So the water was an issue. Water was an issue. But God was exacted for a very good cause. We find the reason later in scripture as Moses recalled the episode of Masasa and Masa, he said, you, re you rebel against the commandments of the Lord. Now we begin to get to the root of the problem. Uh -oh. We begin to get to the root of the problem. What's really going on? You, and, it, and it's in Deuteronomy 9, 9, chapter 23rd and 24th verse. Moses began to speak to the people. Deuteronomy 9, 23 and 24. Moses began to speak. Moses is talking back. They continue to Moses. But Moses began to talk back. He finally read a little and Moses began to say, You, ye have rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, your God. You believe him not, nor hearken unto his voice. You have rebelled against the Lord from the day that I knew you. So this complaint didn't just begin yesterday. It go way back. Now it's about to become to the forefront. Now God is about to get to the root of what's really going on. What's really in the hearts of these people? Moses was telling Israel, you have been rebellious since I know you. You never obeyed or believed God's word. They went through the motion. They went through the practice. They went through all the formalities, making it seem like they believe and trust in God, praise God. But now their hearts are being exposed, glory to God. So what was the real issue? What was really going on with these Israelites, praise God? What was the real problem? What is it was they're trying to cover up that now God is about to expose? Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For God to get you where he wants you to be, sometimes we got to expose some stuff in your life. Oh, nah. Glory to God. Because, because we have this false sense that we got it all together. They got so bold and proud, praise God, they thought that they could talk to God any kind of way. Mm. Watch this now. What was the real issue? According to Moses, it was that Israel never truly had faith. Mm. Mm. They never truly had faith in God, and they was expressing it through their mouth, through their complaining and their murmuring. Watch this now. They had never fully committed themselves to trust in the Lord. Church every Sunday, singing the choir, on the praise team, but never fully committed themselves to trust in God. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In fact, these Israelites have been harboring idols all along. Now God is about to respond their heart, praise God. Glory to God, they say they love God, they say they believe in God, but now we find out they've been harboring idols. Mm. Say with me now, glory to God. They kept little gods hidden away in their tents. Mm. To fall back in case God filled them, filled them. Just in case God let them down, they had these little things in their tent that they was hiding. They didn't want nobody to see, praise God. So if, 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 if God filled them, they can turn to these little idol gods. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. The Lord said, you offer me slain beasts and sacrifice in the wilderness, but you took up a tabernacle of Molech and the stars of your God, Rephaim, figures which you made to worship him. 
They had things, praise God, little things that trickles that they have made, praise God, and they had brought it into their camp, praise God. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they thought they were hiding it from God. But God, God, God exposed their little gods, praise God. Little things that we may turn to, praise God. When things get hard, praise God. And then a turn to God, praise God. We turn to these little false idols and false, false things in our lives, praise God. To replace God in our life, praise God. But that anger of God, that upset of God, praise God. Because now you're saying you believe me and trust me. But in your heart, you had something else that you were bound down to. That you were believing in, praise God. Glory to God. They were, they were doing, they was hiding these false gods. This false little guy that got me in, praise God. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Watch that now. Glory to God. They, 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 they begin to take up the tabernacle of Molech. Molech believing child sacrifices. Ooh, mm. And the star of your God, Rephim, which figure you made the worship him. And what here is saying that they begin to worship the moon, the stars, the sun, praise God. These things that God had created, now they're calling themselves, making these things that become idols to them. Glory to God. Now they're worshiping and stuff that God created. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. All you in the house. Glory to God. This is exactly what God wanted to do in Israel. He was telling the people, I'm not holding back any good anything from you. Come on. When you ask me for, to meet your thirst, I move instantly. Mm -hmm. Bring your water from the rock. Now, I'm only trying to get your attention. I want to speak to you about the hidden things in your life. So, God, God got to get us attention, praise God, because there's some things we be done turn to that we be so faithful to and dedicated to, praise God. And these things begin to take the place of God, praise God, but we can't see it. So God has to expose it to us, praise God. Glory to God. Thank you that you may put in a place, glory to God, in a place that the only place the person that's supposed to be in that place is God himself. But you got this little hidden, glory to God, thing that you turn to when things get bad, praise God. Glory to God. It's amazing now, praise God, that how many believers are beginning to turn to the, turn to the psychics and turn to, to, to terror reading cards and glory to God. I had one guy, my daddy told me, said one preacher went bought a an uh, uh, egg for five hundred dollars. See, man, daddy said, man, I could. What the story got you some eggs? He's got a whole carton. Man, that time bought a dollar for something. Glory to God. This is a preacher. Then go to one of these hoodoo houses, whatever you call them. Praise God. To get something else. Praise God. So what he was saying, God, I can't trust you. So I'm going to give this to kind of help my situation out. My, my, my. Somebody say thank. You. It's an insult to God when the children of God begin to go to the to the tarot, tarot cards and to, to, the, to the, the root workers and uh, glory to God. These, glory to God, these were God people that will turn into this idol stuff. Idol tree and they won't try to hide it. Come on, man. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. They didn't want to try to hide it. They didn't want the other church folks to know. Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. They tried to hide it, but God exposed it. Exposed it. Glory to God. God exposed them and then they try to hide behind their mummer and complaining about the water in the rock. The water in what God was providing. God was providing. When they try to hide the real problem, the real issue. What are some things that go on in your life, praise God? What have you carried out of Egypt that you should have cut off? Wow. Are you still holding on to that bad attitude? Are you still holding on to that anger, praise? What is your carry that God trying to cut off? That keep you from getting all that God got for you. Somebody's voice. Thank you, Lord. Israel was still carrying their idols out of Massa. They were still carrying their idols. That means they come through them through the parted wave of the Red Sea. When they went to the Red Sea, they still had idols. They held them even as Pharaoh's army bore down on them. When the Pharaoh only got drunk, they still had their idols. Mm. Are you in the house? <laughs> and they hid them even after God sweetened the bitter water in Mara. Now in Massa, God delivered them without judging them again. He delivered them without judging them. Stay with me now. Fill 
Remember that message with cold water, and ye all alone, God blessed Israel in spite of their idolatry. In spite of idolatry. Now, now watch this. This is very subtle, and this is where a lot of believers gonna miss out on God. Because they think God just forgot because he hadn't brought judgment. He's still blessing them. He's still giving them opportunity. They're in the wilderness, praise God. They got to get their deliverance in the wilderness before they can go into promises. So the 40 years, praise God, is God giving them opportunity to repent. To turn away from, praise God, from the idleness. But no. Yet the people went on hiding their sin. They praised the Lord, enjoyed his protection under the cloud of day and the pillar of fire by night. Why did they go on this way? Why did they go? Keep on going this way. Why did they repent? Because the sentence against evil work is not executed speedily. Because God did not pull out his wrap speedily, they believed it was all right to keep on doing what they was doing. My, 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 my. Mm. They believed it was all right to keep on cussing. God ain't moved yet. <laughs> they believed it was all right to keep on, keep on, keep on holding a grudge in their heart against somebody that hurt. God ain't moved yet. So it must be all right for me to hold on to my grudge. Yeah. Glory to God. Because God ain't moved yet. Somebody say, like, whoo, watch this now. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set on doing evil. When God don't move speedily in people's life, their heart is set on doing evil. Mm. Because they believe, pray to God, that God had let it go, that God had forgot about it. In short, the Israelite has lost the fear of God. Watch this. Mm. The number one, this is the beginning of their downfall. They lost the fear of God. The most dangerous thing can happen to any community is when the church, the body of Christ, lose their fear of God. Because God didn't move. Because God hadn't pulled out his wrath, praise God. They lost the fear of God. God wants us to serve him, praise God. But I, I was worried about whether or not he's going to pour out something on him. He just wants to serve him with all his heart, with all his love, praise God. Hallelujah. He don't want to go to God, judge him, all that kind of stuff, praise God. He just wants us to love him, praise God. But because God wasn't moving in judgment, but he moved in blessing, watch this. They lost the fear of God. Watch this. Now, can't think. Everybody wants the blessing. Don't let your blessing cause you to lose the fear of God. That's a deep statement. Don't take it lightly. They secretly thought we should have been consumed by the Holy Fire by now for disbelieving God wrath. But he never brought judgment on their sins. So we might as well keep on doing our thing. So I believe the song by the Isaac brother was way back in the wilderness. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. They kept on doing their thing. Separate from God. Hallelujah. They took for granted Jeremiah's statement. It is of the Lord mercy that we are not so consumed because the compassion is fell not. Mm. They took God's mercy for granted. They took the mercy of God for granted. Stay with me then. Woo! All you in the house. They yes. took the mercy of God for granted. They took it for granted. They took it for granted, y'all. They, they took God's mercy for granted. But that's a little simple, uncomplicated gospel. When, when, wherever there's genuine repentance, there's instant forgiveness. And that is instant cleanses as well as continues oneness to the throne of God. If we believe these truths, we'll be free. In other words, they ignored God repentance. They kept on doing their thing. They ignored God repentant. They kept on doing their thing. But when they got to the door of the promised land, God shut the door. All this time, 
time, no judgment was upon them. But God wait till they got at the door of the promised land. And because of their unbelief, they could not cross over into the fullness of God. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. They couldn't get in the fullness of God because of their unbelief. The unbelief kept them out. Their unbelief kept them out. Let's look at another quick little example of the seriousness of unbelief. Turn to uh, Luke right quick. The first chapter of Luke. They was at the door. And they didn't get in. Luke chapter 1. And I think it's verses number uh, 6. Okay, verse 6. And they were both righteous before God. Walking in all the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord blinded. They had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both was now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he was executing the priestly office before God in the order of the, the court, according to the custom of the priest's office, he his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And a whole multitude of people were praying without the time of answer. And they appeared unto him by angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar in incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And the wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Watch this now. Jesus. Zachariah, very prominent man, praise God. A priest, a Levite, praise God. Dedicated, faithful, praise God. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing, praise God, how God is giving me show us stuff, praise God. How this, watch this now. The scripture was saying that Zachariah was righteous before God. Walking in all the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord, blames it. Went to church, he went to Bible study, man. I mean, he did all the stuff he studied. I mean, he laid out, I mean, he was a righteous man. He was a pious man who wore the robe of a respected position. He administered before the altar of incense, which represented prayers and supplication, acts of worship. And so, in short, Zachariah was faithful and obedient. A servant who longed for the Messiah coming, praise God. Zechariah had it going on. He, had, he was doing all the right thing. He was doing all the right thing. Well, now watch this now. One day, today if you hear his voice. One day, today if you hear his voice. One day, today if you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. One day, as Zechariah was ministering, God sent the angel Gabriel to tell him and his wife he would have a son. Gabriel said the, the son birth would be a cause of rejoicing for men in Israel. And he gave Zechariah detailed instruction on how to raise the boy. Yet, as the angel spoke, Zechariah trembled in fear. Fear gripped his heart. This man of God, this pious anointed man, fear gripped his heart. And suddenly, this devout man mind was filled with doubt. When fear got his heart, now doubt would fill his heart. And he gave into this the terror of unbelief. He asked the angel, how do you know you're telling me the truth? After all, my wife and I are old. When doubt filled his heart, unbelief came out of his mouth. He began to speak, praise God, glory to God, that this devout man didn't trust God as much as he thought he did. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Now his true heart is being exposed, glory to God. Now, not only, glory to God, not only, but he, it now is coming out of his mouth, praise God. His unbelief, his doubt, praise God. Glory to God. All the great service that he's gained, praise God. Now, now it's being put on the altar. It's being put to the test. 
God didn't take kindly to Zechariah down, and he passed his sentence upon the priest. Watch this now. Behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not to speak, until the days of these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my word. What does this episode tell us? It, it say unbelief shut our ears to God. Mm. Mm. Even when he's speaking clearly to us. <laughs> God was speaking clear to um, Zacharias, but his ears were shut up to what God was saying because of unbelief. Second church, hearing the word, praise God, but getting no revelation because the ears are shut up because of unbelief. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All you know. And it keep us from intimate communion with the Lord. Suddenly, because we no longer hear from God, we have nothing to preach or to testify. It doesn't matter how faithful or diligent we may be, like Zachariah, we bring ourselves into our, in our paralyzed of both our ears and our tongue. Unbelief will paralyze your ears and your tongue. Can't hear, can't speak for God because why? You can't get no rebel, fresh revelation because unbelief blocks it. It blocks it out. I'm reading your word, God. I'm studying, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not getting that. Why? Because your ears been stopped up, and your ears are stopped now. No fresh revelation can come because of unbelief. Finally, we are confronted here. We see that he could not enter in because of unbelief. Mm. Only one sin kept Israel out of the promised land. It was unbelief. Can represent a place of rest, peace, fruitfulness, assurance, fullness, satisfaction. Everything a true believer longed for, this was Canaan to represent. God brought him out of Egypt through the precious blood, the Passover. Egypt was one stage. After he took him out of Egypt, he brought him into the wilderness. Well, they wandered for 40 years. Wilderness was a place of wandering. And they only wandering because they walked in the flesh. They walked by sight, not by faith. Glory to God. He brought them through the wilderness. And the next stage for them to get to was in the Canaan. Canaan was represent the place for overcomers. They all came out of Egypt saved. But they didn't all go into the Canaan land. Into the fullness of God. Just because you're saved and born again. Don't mean you're an overcomer. And our goal. Our goal as believers. Shall be to be overcomer. There was only two overcomers. Praise God. Joshua and Caleb. Praise God. That made it into all that God had. Praise God. I don't want to walk this walk all my life. Live all my life. And then not be an overcomer. Going into the fullness of all. I want everything that God had for me. Praise God. And the only way to get there. You've got to be an overcomer. And the one thing that stops you from being an overcomer. Is unbelief. They couldn't get in because of unbelief. The only sin that stopped them. Unbelief is the only sin. Watch this. The sin wasn't an adultery because all scripture called these Israelites an adultery generation. <laughs> it wasn't that rap of divorcing because Jesus and the Moses granted divorce to the generation because they were so hard hearted. It wasn't their rage. It wasn't their jealousy. It wasn't their sloppiness or backbiting. It wasn't even, Lord, have mercy, Jesus, their secret idolatry. Mm. Those sins were all a result of one sin. Wow. Unbelief. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. They were all a result of one thing. Unbelief. 
So now when we pray, now we should know how to target our prayer lives. And when we see the corruption in our communities in our neighborhood, praise God, we, we understand now, praise God, if you the fear of not having fear of the consequences, when you don't fear consequences no more, that let us know now we're in a very dangerous place. Israel like got to the place where they didn't feel the consequences of the wrath of God. Mm. Now we're living in a time, a very dangerous time, where we have young people coming up there because people that don't believe, that they don't fear consequences. Mm. Mm. Don't fear. Why we can do drive-by because we don't fear the consequences? Why don't we respect our elders no more because we don't fear consequences? Why, praise God, why is there so much bitterness and anger in the house of God, in the church? Why? Because we don't feel what? Consequences. So if the enemy can ever get us to the point where we don't fear the consequences of our doing wrong, praise God, this is one of the most dangerous places that we can be as the body of Christ. This is why it's so important, praise God, that the body of Christ never lose the fear and the reverence for God. Never lose the fear and the reverence for God. No matter how bad you treat me, I'm not going to cuss you out because I fear and I reverence God. No matter what you do, how you turn your back on me, praise God, I'm still going to love you. Why? Because I have that fear and that reverence for God, praise God. Oh, I don't know. I don't care if the world, world turn against us. They're trying to lie. Don't matter. I'm not going to. Because what? I have that fear and reverence for God. So unbelief will, the first thing, he, he tried to take that fear away. He took the Israelite fear away. And because they took the fear away, they kept their idols. They kept their hidden secret sins. And the Bible says the strength of sin is what? Secrecy. Secrecy is glory that God empowers sin. That's why God said if, if you confess your fault, praise God, if you confess your fault, he said he's faithful to know what? To forgive you of your sins. Somebody say thank you Lord. So when we when we pray in for the youth, when we pray for our community, when we pray and praise God, we got to believe down in our heart that God will turn their hearts away from unbelief. Because every sin that exists comes out of unbelief. Wow. The rebellion that we see in our neighborhood, in our street, comes out of unbelief. Once we turn those people into believers and trust in God with all their heart, praise God. Now all the stuff, praise God, they were doing has to cease. Because they don't have a heart for it no more. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It let me see now that my target is not even really Satan. My target is unbelief. Because that's Satan's weapon. It's unbelief. Mm -hmm. So what can put the fire of unbelief. What destroys unbelief? Trusting God with all your heart and with all your soul and leaning not unto your own understanding. What is it that made Joshua and Caleb so special? Mm. It's that they never turn their back on God. Even if the multitude or the majority went against them. They still stay focused on God. They stay the course. 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 Stay the course. Stay the course. Now you can understand every attack, everything come at you, everything is designed for you to let a seed of unbelief get in your heart. And if that seed have the opportunity to grow, wow. Now you're given place, praise God, for the, the seed, uh, I mean, for the, uh, that seed to become, to take what? To take root in your heart. And this is what we don't want. This is our battle, is keeping unbelief from taking root in our heart. God love you. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. I remember a little man by the name of Paul Smith. That was our daddy, praise God. And he would give a warning one time. He said, y'all cut that out. Glory to God. But 
Nobody paying attention, so you keep on doing what you're doing and just keep on running and jumping. And all of a sudden, you th he thanked Pa Smith and forgot. Next door, you know, he done jumped up with that belt and whooped everything in the house, glory to God. Glory to God. And everybody got a revelation, praise God. Hallelujah. When he said one time, <laughs> he mean it one time. But it might not come when you want it, but it's coming. <laughs> it's coming, somebody said. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory, even though God may not help move yet, but it's coming. And all you think he's doing now is giving you an opportunity to repent. And say, Lord, forgive me. The Lord softened my heart. Lord, that one guy in the Bible said, Lord, help. Lord, I believe, Lord. But help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. It's our enemy. It's the battleground. The battleground, it was unbelief. That's what it's at. That's what it said. If it's not, why would Jesus make this statement? That when he come back, the one thing that he's going to be looking for is faith. Jesus. <laughs> and it can't, be a, it can't be the sinners. It got to be the believers, right? Because <laughs> the, the, the ungodly, glory to God, not going to be having no faith in God. So he's saying that what was going to be, we're going to begin to see diminish in the last day. It's faith in God. And we're seeing it, we're witnessing it right here in the United States of America where Christianity, which used to be the number one, now has dropped back because people are leaving the faith. People are walking away from God. Why? No fear of consequence. Stand on your feet. No fear of consequence. Don't let nothing and nobody Cause you to walk away from God. I don't care how dark you get. I wouldn't seem like. Keep your faith in God. Keep your faith in God. It's an everyday battle. It's an everyday walk, praise God. Moment by moment, praise God. Even if you got something coming upon you, just start saying you're a praise son. I mean, just do bad things you got to do to keep your keep your faith. Don't let nothing shake your faith in God. Stay focused. Stay faithful. Stay believing. Stay with God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep your hope, your faith, and trust in God.